Hello folks, hope you're having a good day today. Today I want to take a look at Ming Lee Wade Wellman's Frog Father uh, from the collection that I just talked about. Um, I just did a, a, a review for you recently for one of the stories in this collection, um, and that story was called The Kelpie. It was published in Weird Tales in the mid-30s. And now we're going to take a look at 1946's um, Frog Father, which, I, which is the, the, probably my favorite story of Wellman's I've read so far. Um, so let's take a look at it. Now before I get started, Ming Lee Wade Wellman, in short, uh, was a person who wrote during the pulp era. He was born in Africa, uh, in one of the Portuguese colonies, um, in future Angola. And um, he was uh, of a lot of different ancestries and so forth. He was most, he was, um, had some Native American blood in him and so forth. And you'll see in this story a reverence for Native Americans that you may not normally see in the pulp era uh, and so forth, um, and, a, and, a, and, a, and a respect for them too, uh, and so forth. Um, and you'll also see, I think, um, uh, a number of sort of things. He also moved, his family moved and lived in Appalachia in the, in, in the mountains of, in the Carolinas. So he'll write a lot of Appalachian folklore, a lot of Appalachian locations and so forth um, in his stories. And this is a good example thereof. Um, this story is set more in the southern parts uh, of Appalachia and so forth, but you'll get a good feel for it um, and, and so forth in this story. Now this story was seven pages in my collection. It was published in 46. Now when I went um, after I read a story I really like, that I really like a lot, and I think I want to bring it to you folks, um, one of the things I do is I do a little bit of research on it to see, have, has other people reviewed this? Is this a story that's well known? And when I did and looked it up, I saw that there were actually some reviews on it uh, and so forth that I had not read <laughs> by people I respect that were out there. Uh, and they all unanimously liked this story too. So it's not just me. That, that's good to know. <laughs> uh, and so forth. But yeah, it's a, after I read it, I was like, mm, that's, that, is, that was... That's a good story, and I, and I and so far in this collection, and I'm about one fourth of the way through it. Um, I've probably read about eight stories in it so far. Of about 28 um, that are in this collection so far, uh, it's my favorite story so far. So let's take a look at Frog Father and why I like it so much, and why I think it's actually resonant for people that are reading today. So take a look at it. So let's get started. Frog Father is going to take place um, in the basically in, in in the swamps of Southern Appalachia and so forth. Um, near the bayou and so forth and it's probably going to have a little bit more of, of a, a sort of bayou of florida or uh, alabama or so forth who doesn't set it um in the specific like state or country or region you just know that it's taking place in one of those swamps uh, and so forth and basically you're going to have three characters in the story your main character is going to be your point of view character he's going to be a young uh, um, guy who was given away um, as a slave um, super secretly by his aunt after his parents done and so forth to this man that nobody likes in the area um, who owns a lot of the area and this guy basically is this one of the second people that's going to be in the story and he is um, nobody, nobody likes him he owns a lot of land and so forth in the area he hosts hunting party expeditions for people from the north that come down to the south for hunting um he'll take them on hunting expeditions um and so forth they'll hunt bear they'll hunt uh, local um, wildlife like alligators and so forth um, and then they'll also do um, frog hunts too but that's what he likes to do he likes the frog hunt and so forth um and he has this and and uh, our point of view character says that he it's, it's pretty well known that um, the reason why this uh, rich guy who's here likes to do the hunting is because he likes to kill things uh, he, um, he enjoys the killing something uh, and so forth that's why he also likes to hunt frogs at night uh, so we can get frog legs in and so forth so they are on a boat uh, the, th the three of them uh, this guy late at night who's got his um, you know and again this guy was given as a uh, as, a, as an unofficial slave to this man uh, by his aunt uh, after his parents died in order to pay off her debts and so forth and thus all the money that he would normally get from his work which isn't much uh, <laughs> will go to pay off the debts that's owed um, his aunt and so forth and he, and the guy won't, won't, won't let him forget won't say you won't you know he doesn't have his freedom you're a slave and so forth you have to do what I tell you to do and so forth. And then our final person is an Indian employee and, and one of the natives um, who lives locally in the area in the swamp. Uh, and he's, he's employed by this guy and so forth. So you're going to have the three characters, the Native American guide um, who is canoeing this boat that they're out at night frog hunting for and so forth. So the man says, I hear, uh, I, I'm not seeing any, any uh, frogs here, but I'm hearing them coming from the distance in this little cove. I've never been out that way before, but let's let's um, move the canoe over that way, and then the Native American will say, and he will say this in a clearer 
English, um, and in fact, our main main view character uh, is like he spoke he spoke this in a plainer English than I did, <laughs> than I speak, than either of us, uh, and so forth. And he says well, we don't go out that way, and so forth. He talks about that there's um, uh, this 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 legend out that way that that the fought that the frog fathers out there. Um, and he has this uh, cool name that I can't remember the name off it off the top of my head. It's really long, uh, almost a Cthulian name. It's, it's really great. Um, but anyway, the frog father's out that way uh, and so forth. That's where the person is who created all the frogs um, in the area. He also, according to rumors and myths, also created all the channels here that are nearby for the frogs and so forth. So the frogs are over there because they know they're safe over there and so forth. And we don't go over there and disturb them uh, and such. And of course, our, our older... Um, wealthy not nice guys when you say that's just a bunch of native hogwash take me over there anyway um, now and the native american says no i'm doing this for your protection um and so forth and uh, the guy says get off the boat uh and so the native american says all right let's pull over to the side of side of the road or side of the road <laughs> pull over to the dock and he'll get and i'll get out and he says no get out now so the native american forces the native american to jump out of the boat and swim to shore <laughs> and so forth so that's how much our guy's a nice guy anyway um, obviously, they're going to swim over to the area and to the region that's reserved for the frog father and, and his children and so forth, according to Native American myth and legend. And then, of course, we're going to see um, our, our, our bad guy uh, and who's going to kill a frog and so forth. And we'll see what happens uh, and so forth. And what ends up happening, uh, first of all, it's a traditional, I think, sort of horror story you're going to expect from the story. And then I think the final page actually takes it in a completely different direction. Uh, the Native American adds some, I think, valuable context to it and so forth um and he um he isn't i mean i mean the native i mean you know the horror trope of a local native person warns you away from crime but you say hey look you know i'm more uh i'm more uh stronger than that and uh you know i'm a white guy or i'm a I'm a rich guy or something like that. You're not going to tell me what to do <laughs> with these little superstitions that you guys have. Come on now. And then they go and then they get they get their butts handed to them or they die or something like that. And this happened actually in the Tree Men of Amboise, which I reviewed for you recently uh, as a part of our uh, Cthulhu Mythos. You saw this, for example, in Don Wandre's uh, there where you saw um, the local people try to warn um, our, our our main character off from a specific area. He says that the magic there is bad and people that go there die. He doesn't listen because he thinks he's just a bunch of hogwash and then guess what happens <laughs> um you know and this is an ongoing trope right um in horror you don't listen to the locals because you dismiss them as being idiots or something like that and then what ends up happening exactly uh, and the same thing's going to happen you know here in a multiple other places too right uh and so forth and I, so so it does happen here in frog father but then there is an, an additional sort of like um spin that happens um, beyond that. You expect that to happen once you start get a feel for what's happening and so forth. Um, although in this case, the Native American is actually speaking good English. Um, he has a cogent argument and so forth. He's giving some thumps, some things and so forth. And then he'll swing, swing by and on the last like page and a half uh, and so forth. And then he gives a context to it that actually kind of gives you another spin. So, so if you were, so going into it as somebody who's horror trope savvy, uh, for for the pole bear or for other horse stuff, right? You're going to expect that that's going to be where, where it ends, but it actually goes to a different place, and that different place is something I think is really interesting, uh, and so forth. And I, I got to respect uh, the, the 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 writer Manly Wade Wellman, uh, and so forth. And I appreciate when somebody goes to the place you're expecting and then takes you to from that place to another place, <laughs> and so forth. I appreciate when a writer does that, um, and Wellman did this. I think I think in this order very very well. The writing's good. The world building's good. Um, it's it's scene after scene after scene after scene of stuff happening uh, and so forth. Um, it, it's not a long story. It's seven pages long in my collection, so it won't take you long to read. Uh, I re literally read it in my bath. And what I do is when I, I like to like take long baths and each day, maybe for like an hour, and then like read during that hour, kind of unpack and wrestle with the, with the world and so forth. And I actually finished this short story before I ran the water in my bath. <laughs> That's how <laughs> I was just sitting down there, started it, and I finished it like 15 minutes, 20 minutes later, probably more like 25 minutes later, actually. Uh, and then, but I was so into the story and so forth that I forgot to run the water from my bath. That's how much <laughs> I enjoyed this story, right? And that's how much I was engaged by it. Even though, again, you know, you, you 
you know where it's going, but you, it keeps keeps pushing past that, and so I really enjoy it. So there you are. That's Frog Father by Manly Wade Wellman. So let me know what you thought about it in the comments below. If you read it, have you? Uh, let, let me know what you thought about in the comments below. And if you haven't, I'll, again, I'll set you up with a link so you can check it out. Uh, I think Manly Wade Wellman is one of um, the uh, people that we really should be reading more of, um, and so forth. You may come to him from Gary Gygax's Appendix N as a, a big influence in Dungeons and Dragons. You may come to him from Cthulhu Mythos because he wrote some stories in the Mythos. You may just come to him as a fan of the Pulp Era reading a bunch of pulp stuff. He wrote hundreds of short stories, tons of novels and so forth, um, and other sorts of things too. He has some very interesting characters um, and so forth, and I'll, I'll continue to read them. I'll bring to you folks stories that as I come across them, I think are really good, like this one and so forth. But anyway, there you go. That's Frog Father for you. Let me know about what you thought about in the comments below. If you liked this video and this story, please feel free to hit that subscribe button. I like to unpack for you these sort of classic forgotten works um, from fantasy, science fiction, and horror. And this is definitely horror. Uh, <laughs> and so forth. And it's really good, too. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed it. Um, and then finally, hey, I want to thank you so much for taking some time out of your day for watching this video. Because we all have such busy days and busy lives. So the fact that you spent this time with me, it's really humbling. And I appreciate that. So thanks again.